All right, now we start with the next section of mindfulness of the body. That section is called Iriyapatha. Iriyapatha means uh, path of uh, gaining mindfulness through postures. That means using postures as a means to gain insight. So postures are four postures, standing, sitting, walking, and lying down. Some uh, meditation uh, teachers not only do not uh, talk about four postures, but they even uh, reprimand people doing walking meditation. If they caught them walking in during meditation, they come to them and ask, what are you doing? If they say we are doing walking meditation, no, 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 you are not supposed to do walking, you sit. They emphasize only one posture, that is sitting posture. But you can see in this discourse, Buddha has uh, recommended four postures. These four postures are like uh, four wheels of a vehicle. You got to balance all the four wheels to make your vehicle run smoothly. When you, you know, align your uh, vehicle, you got to align all the four wheels. Balance all the four wheels. Only then can you run your vehicle, uh, drive it very smoothly. Similarly, in the practice of uh, mindfulness training, all the four postures are equally important because mindfulness is uh, a practice that we are supposed to do in any posture, not only in one posture. Also, most of the time we talk about uh, walking meditation, not very much sitting uh, meditation. The, the discourse says, when walking understands walking. <laughs> what is there to understand? When you walk, we know we walk. When standing, understand standing. When sitting, understand sitting. When lying down, understands lying down. Now let us take each of them in turn and try to elucidate this uh, hidden, uh, concise meaning. First we take uh, walking. I think uh, many people are aware of uh, what they are supposed to do in walking, in walking meditation. Uh, but even then, there are a lot of uh, different instructions on walking meditation. How should one do walking meditation? Not only understands walking, when we say understands walking, it involves many things in our walking. And if we understand all of them, then we understand walking. Normally we do walking uh, as a habit. We don't gain too much insight from walking. We don't pay too much attention to walking. And therefore, 
we do not gain too much uh, insight from walking. In order to understand walking as uh, the Buddha asked us to do, we have to do walking very slowly. Normally, we walk just to get certain things done, you know, very quickly. Uh, therefore, we don't want to do slow walk. And therefore, we had to select a specific period of time to do walking very slowly in order to see what involves in walking. So, I recommend that uh, uh, we stand first and do standing meditation first. And although these four are mentioned in this order, uh, again uh, we must uh, select whichever we can uh, practice at any given moment. For instance, to walk we got to stand. So, let us say uh, we stand first. We stand relaxing our hands, relaxing our legs, relaxing our body, focusing mind on the breathing for few minutes, maybe two, one or two minutes in order to uh, collect ourselves to uh, gain some awareness of standing. So, that itself is a meditation. So, Buddha said when, st when standing understands standing, meditator when stand he understands standing. What involves in standing is first uh, we slowly mindfully get up from our sitting. Our mind generates uh, what you call uh, what we call intention to keep the body in perpendicular position, standing position. And we got to be mindful of that, we got to be aware of that. And then we slowly breathe relaxing the body, relaxing our hands, relaxing our legs, noticing the perpendicular standing position. At that time, if uh, we are unmindful, uh, we really do not know what is going on in standing. When we are mindful, we will notice that the that the uh, uh, body is in that standing position and our breath is going on and on as before. And also we realize that this standing is not uh, done by some uh, uh, special uh, being, additional external being or internal being but dependent upon various causes and conditions we make the standing. Causes and conditions are first our intention, desire and intention or desire itself is caused by something that is uh, uh, previous uh, uh, a posture that made uncomfortable. We want to relieve that discomfort and there arises a desire to stand. And then we stand. When we stand, we create a lot of energy. We had to have energy to stand, keep the body in a standing position. Normally, when we do not have too much, let, in a sufficient energy, we cannot stay standing. We all know that. So, we generate enough energy 
what is called through the intention, and that energy is called chitta kriya vayudhatu in Pali. That is, uh, air elements created by the mental activities, chitta kiriya. Chitta kiriya means mental activities. That means the thought. The thought generates sufficient energy to lift the body from sitting posture. When we pay attention, we can realize this energy is creating and Diff diffusing all over our body just to lift the body. Lifting the body does not happen automatically. Mind has to create sufficient energy and there has to be a sufficient energy in the body to lift the body. And then also there has to be sufficient energy to maintain the body in standing position. You know, when people do not have much energy, they cannot stand. We all know that. So, once we generate this energy, lift the body and continue to generate this energy to keep the body in standing position. Then, also we become mindful of the, the, uh, the uh, earth element. Earth, earth element is uh, become active uh, to keep the structure in that position. Our, our bones, muscles uh, must hold together uh, in order to keep the body stand in, in standing position. That uh, uh, structure uh, to keep in that position, uh, earth element must be must be active. Then, when we stand, we feel the touch of our feet touching the floor. Then again, because of the touch, we feel the earth element. The touch is possible because of that. We feel the hardness of the floor, hardness of the feet and that is because of the earth element. And after a while, uh, as we are standing for a while, we feel the heat element generated under our feet. When we stand on, the, on one particular place for a few seconds, that place becomes hot because the heat element of the body is uh, radiated and we feel the heat. So, we are we feel the heat under our feet and we feel the heat on the floor that uh, transferred from the body onto the floor. Then after a while we feel the water element like <laughs> you know, sweating under our feet. When we stand in one place for a while we feel the water element. So, and we, when we watch, we will feel air element going in and out, our breathing. See, all the four elements are, uh, function, uh, are functioning uniformly to do their regular function. And at the same time, we have to uh, keep our alertness, awareness, mindfulness, not falling, not falling asleep. When we stand, if, you, <laughs> if we fall asleep, we cannot maintain that position. All these things happen when we stand. Although we do not notice these things, because habitually we can stand, our body can stay in that position. But mindful meditator's uh, duty is to become aware of what involves in standing. That is, what, that is what it means. You know, when you say standing, 
when standing, understand standing means all this. Otherwise, any tiny little child, any even animal uh, knows when that uh, child or animal stands, they know they stand. That's not a big deal. But the meditator's uh, uh, duty is to know the details involved in a standing position. And we maintain that, maintain that position, relaxing, becoming aware of them, breathing slowly, mindfully, we stand. And also, while standing, other things can happen, like uh, a thought can arise in our mind. Emotion can arise in our mind. Memory can arise in our mind. Feeling arises in our mind. We feel the standing position. And that is our feeling aggregate. We perceive the standing position. That is our perceptional aggregate. Thought arises in our mind. That is our uh, what you call sankhara aggregate, volitional formations. Consciousness arises while we are standing. That is our consciousness aggregate. And they also keep changing. Now you can see body is changing because the heat changes. Heat is, heat is bodily element, physical element, air going in and out through the breathing, that is changing, the perception changing, consciousness changing, thoughts changing, feelings changing, everything, every aggregate is involved and every aggregate is changing. Just it appears to be standing only still. We are, we, are, we are just uh, uh, staying still without motions, but motions going on, movements going on in our body and mind all the time. Inside meditator, meditator's duty, vipassana meditator's duty is to become aware of these changes, become aware of impermanence. While standing, this impermanence takes place, <laughs> just like while sitting, impermanence takes place. And while standing, we become mindful, aware of impermanence, while just like we become mindful and aware of impermanence while sitting. So we, we wait, stay like this, uh, becoming aware of all these things in a very subtle, deep, level we stand maybe one minute two minutes three minutes as long as you feel comfortable standing stay in that position and then slowly now I recommend people to use their breath with the movement of their feet in order to keep uh, in touch with the breathing, in touch with what they have been doing while sitting. While sitting, most of the time we use our breath as our main central focal, uh, focal point. So we, when we stand, we stand while breathing, we get, get up while breathing and stand while breathing, noticing the breath. And then, while breathing, lift the heel of one foot. And while breathing out, rest that foot on its toes. Now you are unbroken, your mindfulness is unbroken, not interrupted because something you are always doing 
while you are sitting and the same thing you continue to do while you are getting up and standing and then we walk use the same thing that is the breath so you are uh, standing while lifting the heel of one foot you breathe in and while breathing out you rest that foot on its toes again while breathing in lift the foot and carry it forward while breathing in and when it goes sufficient distance stop inhaling and then stop forward movement of your foot simultaneously and then while breathing out lower your foot down and touch the floor with the foot and while breathing out so as soon as you touch the foot on the floor and the, the touch the floor with the foot your breathing exhaling may still continue for a few seconds and then stay like that and breathe out completely when you finish exhaling then while inhaling lift the heel of the other foot and rest that foot on its toes while exhaling again while inhaling lift that foot carry it forward and as soon as it goes sufficient distance and then forward movement stops inhaling stops and while exhaling you bring the foot down and touch the floor while exhaling and when the foot settles down on the floor then you start lifting the other foot while breathing in so when you do this that means two inhalings two exhalings per stride inhaling you lift the feet exhaling you rest the foot second time inhaling you lift it carry it forward and while breathing out lower it and touch the floor when you do this of course we have to do it very slowly very mindfully paying total attention to the movement of our feet and the breathing then what you notice would be we talk about intentions and uh, motions and all this but if you walk very very fast you don't notice any of this thing when you do when you breathe slowly and walk you can notice the moment you intend to breathe in that moment foot also will be ready will be lifting so intention beginning of breathing and beginning of the foot all these three things happens almost simultaneously although you intend to breathe intend to lift the foot and lift but all these three things appear to be happening simultaneously and you can notice them you want notice them and then that is the the even when you sit and uh, focus your mind on the breathing you do two things always we do two things one in when we are sitting walking i'm what do you call sitting while breathing in we become aware of it so becoming aware of it one thing and breathing is another isn't it while we are sitting we do two things we breathe with awareness when we when you walk we uh, intend to walk we breathe and walk we do three things and all these three things we can notice if we walk slowly and then after a while uh breath and the movement becomes almost automatic and then we begin to notice we begin to feel 
you know. So, in a very subtle way, we begin to feel air element is active when the foot is being lifted. And heat element becomes active when the foot is moving. Water element and earth element become active when the foot is coming down and touching the floor because water element and heat, uh, earth element are heavy, they come down. Heat element and air element are light, they go always, always go up. As you know, heat, heat is always rising up, air also is moving up. So, in the motion we will experience heat element and air element and then when the foot come, comes down and touch the floor, our earth element and water element becomes active. However, if you try to verbalize, ah, now this is water element, this is earth element, this is air element, then you can never notice anything. Your mind will be engaged in your word. And therefore, don't verbalize, don't conceptualize. But the mind is so powerful, mind can notice these changes, the elemental changes. And also, Many things are happening, although even though mind is extremely powerful, uh, mind cannot notice all of them. For instance, uh, every time intention arises in our mind to lift the foot and, the, and breathe, energy is generated. I mean, energy has to be generated for the foot to be lifted. And that energy, as soon as it is generated, is uh, discharged through our nervous system right to the foot in order to lift it. And that also happens every time we lift our foot. And also, the feeling arises. Feeling of breathing, feeling of lifting, feeling of resting and feeling of moving, feeling of putting the foot down also arise. Every time we move, feeling arises. Also, we mentally perceive all this happening. We become fully aware of that. And thought arises in our mind we also become fully conscious of what is happening. All the five aggregates are active. <laughs> In walking, also all the five aggregates are working. And you can notice the feeling you had when you were standing will no longer be there when you lift the foot. When you lift the heel, the feeling you had before that is gone. When you lift the heel. And when you rest the foot on the toes, you have one feeling. As soon as you start lifting the foot, that feeling disappears. As the foot goes forward, another feeling arises. When the foot forward movement stops, and then feeling stops. When the foot comes down, another feeling arises. When you touch the floor with your foot, another feeling arises. Every moment, new feeling arises. Always new feeling arises, new perception arises, new consciousness arises, new thought arises. New energy arises new intention arises. See how many thousands or hundreds of things are involved in our walking. Becoming aware of all of them 
is what, it, what is meant by walking understands walking. How many of us know all this when we walk? And therefore we should not take this very lightly and you know, scorn at it, laugh at it and think, ah, what is, that? what is there to learn? Even little babies can walk. Surely anybody can walk. But not too many people, too many of us, become aware of what involves in walking. Our mindfulness, uh, the, fun, uh, the duty of mindfulness meditators is to become aware of minutest changes. Because big changes are made up of minute changes. When we know the minute changes, and then our insight becomes sharp. And then we will see impermanence. This is what is called Yoniswa Manasikara. Yoniswa Manasikara means knowing from the root. Yoni means root, the origin, beginning. Beginning of impermanence. In the rudimental level of impermanence subtle level of impermanence. And impermanence is not something very gross. It is extremely subtle. And that subtle level of impermanence can be noticed only when we see these very uh, tiny changes. Uh, but we have to do walking very slowly. Once we gain the knowledge and awareness of impermanence in slow walk, then even if we walk a little faster, our awareness, our understanding will remain the same. So, two of the postures are, one is standing, one is walking. So in the in standing, all the aggregates change, feeling arises, perception arises and changes, a thought arises and changes, consciousness arises, arises and changes, and feeling arises and changes. The the body uh, bodily uh, things arise and change. Here bodily things at least uh, is our breathing. Similarly, sitting. How can we become mindful of sitting? Everybody knows when they sit, they sit. Just like in standing, uh, there are not too many activities when we sit down. But if we mindfully watch our sitting posture, we will notice the changes that take place in sitting. For instance, when as soon as you assume a posture, uh, you put your legs in certain or certain way, uh, you put your buttocks on your cushions or you know stool or whatever. First, you will feel the touch of the body with the cushion or the stool, or the floor, or chair, or whatever. When you touch, first thing you notice the feeling of touching. Second, you notice the hardness or softness indicating the earth element. Whether it is soft or hard, that feeling of touch comes from earth element. Then after a while you feel the heat of your buttocks at the bottom, you feel the heat, that the heat element. Then you sometimes feel uh, sweating uh, or inside your body you feel heat uh, under your clothes, that is a heat element. Or you feel uh, wet sweating, that is your 
what element and when you sit down in order to maintain the posture we have to generate energy if you lose energy you will slouch fall asleep and you lose the balance so go to generate energy and keep generating this energy while you are sitting sometimes uh, uh, when you forget to generate energy forget to be mindful forget to be alert you fall asleep so then you become mindful of the chair um, uh, of the uh, earth element you become mindful of water element you become mindful of heat element you become mindful air of air element and you become mindful of the energy generated by your intention of put making the body straight sitting and you will see all of them changing your your feeling at first may be very comfortable feeling and what happens after a few minutes you know that comfortable feeling is no longer there so you become aware of the impermanence of the feelings you become aware of the impermanence of your uh, heat element impermanence of your water element air element earth element and uh, energy constant generating to keep the body in that position they also change impermanent a becoming aware of all these things while sitting in one posture is the duty of mindfulness meditating and therefore uh, we become aware of the fact that this is sitting this sitting is conditional it is not unconditional this can is conditioned by various things by our intention our uh, feelings because if the feeling changes we change our posture uh, uh, intention energy feelings our perceptions the place all these things involved in making our sitting and therefore they all are supporting our sitting and they all change our, per our uh, perception of sitting changes our feeling of sitting changes our thought of sitting changes uh, energy that is generated is change is changing everything we change after 10 15 20 30 minutes you will be totally different person different feeling different perception different thought different understanding different attitude different intention all are changed so becoming aware of all this is important now none of these things is made by some permanent eternal entity all these things are made by changing impermanent conditions within the body and mind that we have to understand and the last is uh, lying down understands lying down in lying down what involves also the same thing we have intention to lie down we have to generate energy to lie down we have to uh, we feel the touch of lying down we feel uh, uh, the heat when we lie down we feel uh, earth element water element fire element air element when we lie down it is not very easy of course to maintain the awareness or become mindful of lying down too long because lying down is the posture that we assume most of the time to go to sleep but until we fall asleep until we go to sleep we can become mindful we can become aware of that posture and what involved in that posture so
you know, <coughs> if we can become mindful of every tiny little thing that involves in all these postures, every time we assume these postures, it is most likely that one, if we, if, it is big if, if one maintains this mindfulness in all these postures all the time, it is most likely that that person can attain enlightenment within seven days. <laughs> Unfortunately, not too many people are that, that you know, mindful. Now, I like to start the next one, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Funacheparang uh, is uh, translated as uh, furthermore monks a monk. Uh, we must understand Punaja Parang uh, that means uh, again or whenever one gets involved in that particular thing. Now We discussed, just discussed the posture and now we come to another section where it says when going forward or back, he fully aware, he is fully aware of what he is doing. So what is the difference between walking and uh, going forward and backward. And how can one become fully aware of what he is doing? <coughs> because one he is or one uh, in walking one already has become fully aware of what he is doing. And uh, what is more here, what is special in here uh, that the mindful meditators is supposed to do? What are we uh, asked to do uh, here in addition to what we have discussed uh, earlier. <coughs> in in this, this section is called uh, Sampajan, Sampajana Pabba. Uh, Kaya Nupasana Pabba Jana, Sampajana Pabba. That is uh, full awareness section. In the previous section also we had, we, we cultivated full awareness, but in this section full awareness is specifically mentioned to include four types of full awareness. They are called uh, uh, clear comprehensions, four types of clear comprehensions. I mention them by name now, but don't have time to discuss. Full awareness, uh, four types of full awareness is one is uh, the purpose, purpose of going forward and back, in this case going forward and backward. Uh, then domain. Uh, that the field, the scope of mindfulness. The third is uh, uh, suitability and the fourth is uh, non-delusion. These four words don't make uh, much sense until we explain them. Uh, when one does something, one always has a purpose in mind. 
normally nobody does anything without any purpose. Uh, so, and for uh, mindfulness meditators, there also must be a very special, very spe uh, specific uh, purpose in doing what he does. When he or she goes forward, there has to be very spe uh, uh, specific purpose in going forward or going backward. That means going forward the person must, must keep the purpose of uh, using that particular activity. Now when somebody goes from one point to another, say from home to the, to the grocery shop, uh, one does not uh, have any purpose of this particular activity of going. One has a purpose of uh, approaching that place and the purpose is over there in the shop. That means the person wants to buy something. That is average person's purpose in going from one place to another. But in meditator's purpose of going from one place to another has a very special purpose. And that going forward and backward must be suitable. We must, the meditator must ask, is this forward movement is suitable to achieve this purpose? So the purpose and suitability must, uh, must uh, uh, agree. Then, uh, When the person goes forward and backward, uh, the person also must ask, uh, is this my domain, this forward movement, backward movement is, is it my domain? What is my domain? My, my field, my scope. That he must understand. Fourth, when I go forward and backward, am I deluded? Am I clear in going forward and backward? This is what you call four clear comprehensions. I will explain these four clear comprehensions in a uh, sort of a comprehensive way in my next talk because if I start now, I cannot explain them. I don't have time. So um, now I like to um, pause and perhaps. Uh, Later on you may ask questions, we can discuss.